Hello folks, I'm Dean with Dean's Woodworking. Welcome to the shop. Y'all come on in and make yourself comfortable. We're going to do another shop talk. After the first shop talk, there were so many positive comments saying that yes, this is something we need to do. So we're going to go forward with this and each week we'll pick a subject from questions you folks ask and we'll try to concentrate on something that's a skill or as in tonight we're going to talk a little bit about safety in the lathe or the shop and so stay tuned this is something you might want to hear first of all let's go through some questions let's start out with Oregon old timers comment said he really likes the idea of the shop talk and he likes to watch live videos instead of streaming because too many times he thinks that they stretch 10 minutes worth of information out into an hour and I can't really disagree with him, although I would love to do some live streams. Uh, it's just too difficult with my schedule right now to set up a regular schedule of live streaming. So we will keep it on videos and not do live streaming for now. So then we had Glenn Crandall that said he really loved the idea of the shop talk videos, but his concern was that we would go exclusively to shop talk videos and stop doing the projects. Folks, that's not going to happen. You, you've seen some delays in the regular videos and I'll explain that when we uh, start to transition into the safety segment, okay? But do not fear the live video or the uh, project videos will continue, okay? Here's another one. Ed Eldridge is telling me that, again, he prefers the videos over the live streaming, so don't, don't worry about that, Ed. We're going to keep with the videos for now. And here's another one from Jay Pilling, and I hope I said your name right. And his concern is safety and would like to see us talk about safety. Funny thing, that's exactly what we're going to talk about tonight. But specifically, Jay wants to warn folks about using rags on the lathe. And we'll talk about that just a little bit, okay? Then we've got James Maxwell wanting to know, can you, do, can you sharpen tools without a jig? Can you do freehand sharpening? Well, James, I can tell you, people sharpened tools freehand long before jigs came around. So yes, you can do it and you can become very proficient at it. Just like wood turning, it just takes practice. And maybe we'll have a uh, segment on that. I'm definitely going to have some segments and possibly even some full videos on sharpening this year. And then I know I'm going to butcher this name. And Ivan, I'm going to apologize in advance. Ivan Govertz is wanting to know about finishing. And I can tell you, we, we will talk about finishing uh, in an upcoming video. When I first started... Uh, doing any kind of real woodworking and, uh, and wood turning, that was one of the most confusing aspects for me. And really it's only after you kind of learn a little bit about the different finishes and stuff that you realize a lot of them are just combinations of each other. And it's, it's not as difficult as it sounds once you just kind of narrow it down to one or two finishes. But I tell you what, the process of narrowing that down can be, get pretty tough. So we'll talk about in a later video exactly what I did and how I reached the point of where the finishes that I'm using today, okay? Folks, that kind of hit the highlights of some of the questions. I had so many folks, great idea. I don't know what questions to ask, but I sure hope that somebody else asks a question because I don't know much. I'm just getting started and on and on and on. So if you've got a question, put it in the comments or go to my Facebook page. It's listed in the comments and message me so that I can put them on here and try to answer them and help folks out and if you see somebody asking a question in the comments and you have an answer, feel free to chime in and help those folks out. 
This needs to be a community where we're all helping one another. And I know some of you probably know a whole lot more about wood turning and many aspects of wood turning than I do. But it's all about sharing and all getting better together, okay? So many comments that this was such a great format. And so we're going to go forward with it. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about safety. Let me tell you why I chose safety uh, for the topic tonight. And you may say, okay, well, it's, there were so many comments about safety. No, there really wasn't. And the thing is that safety tends to be one of those things that we need to think about every single time we walk in the shop. I walked into a friend's shop several years ago and I saw a sign up there and I, I've never put one up, but I really need to. It says, none of these machines have brains. You have to use your own. Nothing could be more truthful, guys. It's really up to us to be safe and to watch ourselves and protect ourselves. With that said, th this is confession time for me, okay? I would never dream of coming out in the shop, turning dry wood, doing any sanding, anything that's going to stir up dust, and stand out here and breathe that without some type of protection. Uh, I even have some videos out on going from the trend to, to putting together a system for, out of this using a HEPA filter. To say that I believe in protecting my lungs is an understatement. Here a few weeks ago, I went to my mom's house, which we lost mom about a year and a half ago, so now it's my house, and it's up to me to get it cleaned out, straightened it out, we're going to renovate it, and that will end up being my retirement home. However, the wife and I are in there, we're cleaning stuff up, we're stirring up dust, because mom was, like I said, she's been gone a year and a half, and it was several years before that that, you know, she wasn't really able to do the normal household cleaning, so things got a little dusty, and of course we're picking up stuff that hasn't been moved in 20 years. Here go the sinuses running. You would have thought that would have been a sign and I would have caught on, right? Well, not so much. You see, I wasn't in the wood shop, and so I just barreled on through, me and the wife both. Sinuses running, well, what do you think happened the week after that? We both came down with sinus infection. I've still got a cough now, so it's kept me out of the shop for the better part of a month that I just don't dare come out here and stir up dust and breathe anything or take any chances because, again, this is probably the longest I've gone without coughing in, in a month and a half, okay? The reality is, if I'd have taken time to put on a dust mask, I would have, and had my wife do the same, we could have protected ourselves and probably avoided all of that. Folks, when I talk about dust mask, it can be something as simple as an N95 dust mask. Is this going to be the best situation? No, it's not. But it's a whole lot better than nothing at all. You can get many different types, shapes, sizes of these where they have some sort of a filter or a cartridge that screws on, they seal off, they're very good. Even for somebody like me wearing a beard, these do pretty good. And if you do have a beard, you can get this little dust mask is powered. Comes with a little battery and uh, this thing sucks air in, blows fresh air in, lets it escape. You're not breathing any dust. You always got fresh air. You don't have to worry about damage to your lungs. And then, of course, guys, I have my trend that I use quite a bit when I'm here by myself. Most of you have probably seen the video I did designing the system with the HEPA filter. If you haven't, I highly suggest you go look at that. That's a really high-end system. 
that I was able to put together at a low end price, okay? One of the things that was mentioned is don't use rags on the lathe. Well, you're saying, well, how am I going to put finish on it? Guys, I use these shop towels. Even using the shop towels, I will normally tear them at least in half. A lot of times I will tear them in quarter and then I'm folding that thing up so that I've got a smaller section and when I'm holding it, I'm holding it like this. So my thumbs on top, my fingers on the bottom. If this catches, it just pulls it right out. Do not make the mistake of wrapping something around your finger because if it grabs it, it's taking your finger too. If you have got to absolutely have to use a cloth, get you some of those little gun cleaning patches. They're small. You put the thumb on the edge, the finger underneath, you put your finish on, and if it does catch or get pulled away, again, it's not wrapped around your finger, it's not gonna pull you into the lathe. One other thing, folks, when those chucks are turning and you get a sleeve up in it, it can pull you in real quick. Be aware of where those sleeves are at. And I get it, some of you are in climates and it's maybe not this time of the year, but at particular times of the year, you can't be in your shop without having more clothes on than maybe you want, just to be able to stay warm. Again, be aware of where you're at and don't let those clothes get up into that chuck or into that turning piece of material that you've got on the lathe. One other thing I want to talk about is gloves. If you've ever turned a large bowl out of dry wood and you've sat there with those dry chips hitting on your hand, you know the benefit of gloves. The downside of gloves is the same as with the cloth. You got to be careful that you don't let that get caught up in the lathe and pull you in. So overall, I would say especially for you new turners. Don't wear gloves. The risk is just too high. For you folks that are a little more experienced and are very, very careful, just make sure if you're going to wear gloves, and I, again, I don't recommend it, that that gloved hand is on the back side of that tool rest at all times. You know, I see folks and the lathe is turning, they put their hand up on the turning piece while it's still turning. That's a recipe for disaster, folks. Just be careful. This is a ton of fun. Nobody loves turning any more than I do. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. But if you're gonna do it, let's be safe. Again, these machines do not have a brain. We have to use our own. Hopefully some of this information helps some of you. And if nothing else, just stop and think. Does it seem right? Does it feel right? Does it look right? If you answer no to any one of those, chances are it's probably not right. And you probably need to look and see if there's not a different way to do it. Okay? Folks, I can't thank you enough for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for subscribing and ringing that notification bell so that you get notified when I upload a video. But most of all, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy turning.